Okay, so we are going to talk about today about compositions of functions. Um, so when we're co uh, composing two functions, we're actually putting one function into the other one. So our notation for compositions, compositions of functions looks like either f of g of x. So we have g inside of our f function, or we see this other notation that looks it looks like the word fog, um, and this symbol right here kind of looks like a multiplication symbol, but it's actually an uh, it looks kind of like a, a little open circle or maybe a degree that's kind of centered. But um, this is still f of g of x. We're putting that g function into the f. The g is second, so it's going inside the f function. So um, in this case, we're going to start off with an example. f of x uh, is equal to the square root of x plus 3. And g of x is going to be x squared minus 1. And so we're going to find f of g of x. So we're going to put the g function inside of the f function for this example. I'm going to use some color here. So I've got this g function, and I'm going to put it inside of that f function. And so if I do that, I'm going to start with my g function and write that down. So I've got the square root of something in parentheses because we're not going to write the x this time. We're actually going to put that g of x inside here, and so we'll finish off that plus 3. And then I'm going to now, instead of x, using a little substitution, put x squared minus 1. And now I've used Christmas colors, and it's not December, so I'm a little mad at myself. But here's my uh, new function. I do need to simplify anything that I can simplify. Uh, the squared and the square root don't cancel because they're not by themselves. The only thing I can simplify here is this negative 1 plus 3. And I did that wrong. So negative 1 plus 3. There we go. And so my final equation here is x squared plus 2. And that is f of g of x. So what I've done here is I've combined and put the g function in the f function. Now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to do that the other way. We're going to take the f function put it in the g function this time. So that will give us a different answer. It will not look the same. It will not look the same. So the second scenario here is that we are going to find g of f of x. And let's see if I can erase all this well. So we have, we're going to take that g function this time, or sorry, the f function, and we're going to put it in here in our g function. So we're going to find, find g of f of x. So we're putting g inside this time. G's in the middle, or sorry, f is in the middle, f's going to be on the inside. So if I start out with my, original, my g equation on the outside, I have quantity squared minus 1. And now in for x, I'm not going to write x this time, I'm putting that f function, my first one here, inside here. So I have the square root of x plus 3. And I put that inside of my equation. Now normally, if this was just a binomial without that root there, we would have to multiply that out by itself. So it would be x plus 3 times x plus 3. Use the box method to simplify that. But in this particular case, we have um, the square root quantity squared. So uh, the, the square root and the square will actually cancel leaving us just with x plus 3 minus 1. And when I simplify that, I get x plus 2. And so that is what g of f of x is. We're done with that piece right there. Okay. 